So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make your shot from this turn to this all in post. My name is Thomas Gelder. Welcome back to another video. Now, this is inspired by Film Riot. I actually watched one of their videos and I've dialed it through After Effects and I wanted to do it through Premiere Pro just to give you guys how you can actually really change your shot in post just from a few creative ideas. And when I was watching the video, I was like, this is absolutely genius, so I need to try it myself. So I'm gonna be showing you and breaking down how to create these interesting shots or creating more background fill just to add some more interest to the shot. So enough talking, let's get straight into the editing suite and see how it's done. So once you're in the editing suite, you're gonna have this clip. And now what you want to do is, first of all, duplicate the clip. This so then gives you the opportunity to separate you and the background from each other. So first of all, you want to key around yourself. Just go on the keys and just key around yourself doesn't have to be too accurate, but as close as you can to the body. So now I have that sorted, make sure you feather it. Bring the mask expansion inwards a little bit, so it's into the minus 15 area. Now this has separated both clips. So now if I go onto the bottom layer and I want to make it a little bit darker, more orange, all I have to do is go on color, go on to basic controls, Bring the highlights down, bring the whites down, bring the shadows down. And as you can see, it's slowly starting to reveal our, our mask. But that's not gonna be an issue because all we're gonna do is just feather that so it gets rid of everything. Make it a little bit more orange. Now what you're gonna go back onto your editing tab, go on your top layer, you're gonna mask feather as you can see, it's creating a little bit too much of a blur, so you're just gonna bring the mask expansion down a little bit more as well. Click on the mask and just toggle it a little bit so it's the keying's a little bit closer to you. And then from here, you want to probably toggle the mask path and just make sure that your keying is gonna be following your character as it moves. I don't really move that much, so it's not gonna be an issue. So now, the mask is sorted. What I'm going to do on the top layer is just match it a little bit to the background, bring it a little bit darker just so it's not overpowering. Now to me that looks fairly decent. It looks like it's matching and it's not too dark either, it's still fairly appropriate to what we need. I'll go back into your editing tab. Now I have this, so I have the background which is that how it would look like if we didn't key ourselves out and then the keying ourselves out look. What I want to do here is create a bit more of a moonshine on my face on this right hand side. So what I'm going to do, duplicate the clip, go into the opacity, get rid of this mask and then you're just going to create another mask around this side of your face where you're wanting the moonshine to illuminate. Again, click on Mask Path, and then do the Auto Track, let it do its thing. So now we have this, make sure you bring the feathering up, just a tad, to around 80 to 100. Go back onto Colour, and all you're going to do is move from Orange, bring it a little bit to the blue side, and again go onto the Colour Wheels, and just bring it a little bit to the blue especially the highlights and the shadows. And if you want it a little bit more blue, just keep toggling it till it looks appropriate. If we go back onto the editing, we kind of have this look. And right now I'm not really happy with it, so we're just gonna keep feathering it till it looks. Maybe bring the mask expansion up a little. So if we just toggle that away, toggle it back, it's creating some sort of moon look. It looks a bit purplish, so what I want to do now is probably create some purple tint in this corner of the room. So I'm going to go onto the bottom layer, click on that, duplicate that. And all I'm going to do here is just mask around 
where the purple side of my face is. Again, you can, you can just crop all the way around this because we've already got another layer on top of that. So it's not going to affect the image of yourself. Now, this is just creating color contrast within your shot. You know, it's always going to add some more dynamic and it's going to make the shot look 10 times more interesting. So now you want to definitely feather this one up quite a lot because you want it to be gradual. Go into color. Now, mess with the temperature. It's a bit too much. Just so you don't want it too much. Go on the color wheels, bring the shadows a bit more to blue and the mid-tones. And now we've got a color contrast going on that looks natural. If, you, if you're not satisfied with how it's looking, just keep feathering away and it's just gonna add that smoothness to the contrast so it looks like it's actual in the shot. So now we've got this, starting from this shot to then keying out yourself to then adding the moon color to your face and then adding the moon color to the background so it's looking more natural. So what you want to do is you want to create some background. You want to create some texture in the photo. So I want to create some blinds. So in order to do this a natural way is to just go on new, go on legacy title, click OK. Now you're going to click on is the line tool. You're just going to draw some lines where you want the lines to be at. And then just bring the line width up to how you want it to be. Because again, you're going to be blurring it. So it is going to be softer. You're going to want it to be around, let's just say, let's just say 30. Make sure the color is black and that's all you need. You just need one line. And from here, you're just going to duplicate it. You can mess around with the positioning, the how big it is. It all depends on how you want it to look. And you're just going to keep doing this till it reaches most of your face. Get a right amount, let's just say. I'm happy with this amount. Now you're going to do here is just nest it, duplicate it, drag that up, size it up, put it into position, make sure it's even. And then all you want to do here is just key out the edges that are obviously exposed. So key out these edges here. You're going to do the same with the bottom layer. Make sure you're keying out. And then go on to blur, go on camera blur. And you're just going to blur it to around six or maybe eight. Same again with the bottom layer, eight. And now that's created a blind look. Only issue is when your character moves, you're going to obviously have to track it, which I've discussed in previous videos. You're just going to have to do it frame by frame the best you can with Premiere Pro. Best way is having your character static like it is at the start, where it's not really that much of an issue. Now, in order to create more of a texture in a background, you want to do the same thing. So make sure you're duplicating blinds again. Now, this is just going to create a window form in the background. So you're just going to go here. Make sure it's positioned right. The further it is, the more of a bigger shadow it's going to cast. So make sure you got that right as well. Duplicate it so it fits right like that. Maybe add a bit more of a blur to this because the further it is away, the more it's going to, you know, not be as visible. So make sure you're bringing the blur length up just so it's subtle, maybe 12. It's right. And now what else we want to do is we want to create a window. So we want to create a little line here that's going to cast as a window. In order to do that, same again, make sure you're creating a legacy title. You're just going to create another line, shaping it as a window. Now you'll want this pretty thick. So window frames are pretty thick. Um, make sure it's black. Done, bring it onto the top layer. Again, make sure you're gonna be blurring it. So let's just say 15. Now, what else you want to do is, to make it sell a little bit more is, you want where the window's gonna be. 
in the background be a little bit lighter so it's like the moonlight's coming through as well as natural lighting from street lamps and stuff like that you're going to duplicate the second layer which was the moon clip that we did as you can see when i toggle it you can see what i'm on about so make sure you're duplicating that clip making sure you're keying out where the window is going to be and then all you're going to do is just bring the exposure up a little bit just so it acts a bit more natural this is where our light source is coming from that's looking good and you want to click on that same clip which will now be a third third layer and you're just going to feather it so it fits naturally if you're not happy with how the blinds look toggle them if you need to be need to so now we have in the background we have the window the blinds reflecting off my face and the background where the door is and to sell it even more, we could even add raindrops around my face. Now, a way to do that is to go on, obviously, YouTube, type in raindrops, green screen. And you're looking for one like this, where it's kind of on your face. Maybe one, this one is a bit more natural. Now, these other websites that do this, like Pond5 and all those type of ones, but again, I can't afford that at the moment, and they're not sponsored by them, so these cheaper ways of doing it and I'm showing you that way download the footage and once that's downloaded you're just going to drag it into the editing suite find a bit that you like the best now what I'm going to do is scale it up bring the part that I like the most onto my face area make sure you go on ultra key Key the bad boy out. Boom. Make sure you're changing the white to shadow. So you probably want to go on subtract. Correct. Bring the opacity down. And all you're going to do now is just key around your face. So now we've got that again. Go on to blur. On to camera blur make sure you're bringing it down to around bring it to around two bring it to around so you can actually see the raindrops and you're just going to do the exact same but with the back layer so where the third layer is i believe so you're just going to bring all these up drag this underneath you can get rid of the mask with this position it where you want it to be again camera blur Make sure the blur length is around four with this one. Play it through. And then all you're gonna do if you don't want the whole thing is just again, key out the parts that you only want. Cover it a little bit. And there we have it. Obviously After Effects is different. You can track a lot of different things to the actual video clip, but with Premiere Pro, it isn't that version yet. So like I said, I'm here to bring you value all through one program. I hope you enjoyed this video. And that's it. It's a very informational video, this one. I really like how you can take something back into the post, even though it's already a beautiful shot, and add more to it, because you can never you know, be satisfied with a simple shot. You always need to add something into it. You can add background textures, you can add blinds, you can add anything you, you can think of, basically. You just gotta use your imaginative mind and, you know, stand out a little bit. But that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.